Hello and uh, welcome to another video in this series uh, which goes over the uh, basic concepts uh, of using Fantasy Grounds uh, Unity. Um, now in this one here we're going to be looking at the player side and particularly we're looking at the player character sheet. So uh, once we uh, get the player character sheet up we can either double click on our portrait in the top left or we can go to uh, characters and we can uh, select uh, the character from here. Uh, there's nothing here because I've selected all the available characters but uh, if no characters were selected it would be they would all be available for selection in this window here. Um, so uh, you've got your character, this has all been set up, we're not showing you how to create a character here, that's a different matter altogether, but everything has been set up, uh, we've got our portrait, uh, we've got a token which is uh, defaulting to the portrait, so it's the same, and then we've got all this information, we've got a bunch of tabs uh, down the bottom uh, right here, uh, which uh, or the uh, right hand side here, which you can click on to see different pages in the character sheet. Uh, up at the top you've got your uh, name and you've then got your inspiration slot. If we click that we can see a little yellow star has appeared over our portrait to say that we have inspiration. Uh, once we've used it, a ticket and it's, the star goes away. Um, we have our class and level here and at the end of this line you will see a little magnifying glass. If we click on that magnifying glass then we open up some further information which tells us about our class, level, specialization and our uh, experience points. Uh, if we want to tell uh, Fantasy Grounds when the, or tell yourself when the next experience level is you can type the amount in here. You can also add a new character in here. You can create a character from a blank uh, character sheet if you want by clicking this and then typing in stuff. Um, here, the caster level here, uh, wizard, it says 1x. That means that we get our spells at first level. If we were playing a half caster, then it would show half. If we were playing a one-third caster, then it would show a uh, one-third here. Uh, you can click through these. You can be no caster at all, uh, but we'll leave it at one. And then it shows uh, how much or what size of dice we get for our hit dice. In this case, it's a die six. And then we've got a box here which shows uh, whether or not we've used any of our hit dice to heal. And in this case, we have not. And the little uh, icon here. Uh, will allow us to open up the uh, uh, book from which this uh, character has been uh, taken. Um, so anytime you see this little magnifying glass on the character sheet, there's another one here, there's another one here, it means that you can open that up, you can click on that and open up to get more information. Uh, we then have our uh, background and our race and again we have links here which we can click on to get more information on our uh, background and race. Um, we have abilities and saving throws down the left and right hand side of this page. Um, you'll notice that there are a, a, a dice icon at the bottom left of each of these little um, squares. And that means that these are a rollable uh, box or a rollable entry. So if we mouse over this, we see that we're changing to a hand. If we double click, then we make that roll. So in this case, we made a strength check. In this case, we're making a con saving throw. So anytime you see this little uh, dice icon, it means it's a rollable box. There's another one here for our initiative. Double click on that and we will roll our initiative. Down the bottom you can see another one, a different kind of dice icon, death saving throws. This one just requires a single click. So when you see that there's a little button, a push button, then it means a single click. If you see that at the bottom left of any of these squares, then it means you need to double click. In the middle here uh, we can see uh, various other pieces of information uh, like our armor class, initiative speed and uh, our uh, perception. And at the bottom we have our wounds. You'll see that in some of these boxes, the little cross at the top uh, right, uh, this means that you're able to uh, add uh, a bonus or a, and a negative to these uh, uh, stats. So if we wanted or if we had, for example, some kind of temporary bonus to our speed, uh, you can hold down the control key and then use the middle mouse button to scroll up to uh, add uh, an extra value. So if we had a plus five to our speed, uh, you can do that uh, here. And you can do that to any of these boxes where you see the little cross and to get rid of it uh, then you just hold down the control key and scroll the middle mouse button down the way. 
uh, at the bottom of the screen you've got your hit points uh, and any wounds and any temporary hit points you have and you've got details here of how many uh, hit dice you have and uh, if you wanted to use any hit dice then you would mouse over here and double click and Fantasy Grounds will automatically uh, heal you for the amount that was rolled on the dice and uh, will remove uh, one of the hit dice that you have here. In this case we weren't wounded so it hasn't used any dice um, but it would do if you had had wounds. The saving throws down the right, we can see that, uh, again, we've got this little proficiency icon in the bottom right to show that we are proficient with these uh, two uh, saving throws. You can also see, again, that we've got this little plus icon, so you can uh, get a temporary bonus to any of these. You can do the same thing as we did with the speed earlier on. Uh, okay, uh, on to the skills tab then. Uh, fairly simple, it's just a list of your skills. Uh, down the left hand side you've got uh, stars uh, set against uh, any skills that you're proficient with. If you're specially proficient, if you click again, um, then you will get double proficiency. Uh, it'll show as two little stars. If you uh, click again, uh, then it will show you that you are a half proficiency. It'll give you a little half star. If you click again, then you get uh, nothing. You're not proficient. And once again, then you are back to being proficient. It shows you your statistic that the skill is based on, animal handling based on wisdom, etc. You can type in a miscellaneous modifier here. You might have some kind of item uh, which gives you a, a bonus to animal handling. You can type that number in here. It gives you your basic uh, bonus here and you can see that these are also rollable boxes. So if we wanted to make an animal handling check, we just double click on this little box and it'll make the check. And in this case, it's giving us a plus three um, because the two uh, uh, of the, the, the extra two that we uh, added in uh, again. If you have bonuses to any of these, it's much better to do it via effects uh, rather than uh, typing it in here. And again, we've got our uh, link icon here, which we can uh, click on to get more information about any particular skill. Uh, you can add new skills here. If you click on this uh, green uh, add item button here, then you can add in uh, a new skill. So maybe you've got a, a trap skill. Uh, type it in and uh, press tab. Uh, it'll add it in to you. Uh, you can then click on this box to cycle through the various abilities on which your trap skill is based, probably dexterity. You can make yourself proficient by clicking on this button. You can give yourself a bonus by adding something uh, in here. The uh, abilities button will give you information on your feats, features, traits, proficiencies and languages. These will all autofill as you build your character, either using the character wizard or drag and drop or whatever. Um, and uh, again, we've got uh, the little uh, icons here which we can click on to uh, give us more information on what, uh, what each of these uh, things do. So this is basically an informational page, but you can add stuff onto that. You can see that any time you've got these little green crosses, uh, you can click on that and you can add in some uh, more stuff. Uh, so if you become proficient in light armor, then you could uh, just type uh, that into the proficiencies uh, section. Um, if you don't like what you've got, uh, you click on the edit list button here uh, and then you get this uh, delete item, which you uh, just click twice on to delete the item. And then we can stop editing list by clicking on that button down there again. The next button is our inventory, which uh, again fills up as we acquire equipment, uh, either uh, by just directly dragging uh, and dropping uh, equipment into the character sheet or um, having selected it in the character wizard uh, or it may be given to you via uh, the party sheet uh, during a distribution of uh, treasure by the dungeon master or you could have dragged uh, items out of the party sheet yourself and dropped them in here. Um, again, uh, we see uh, that there is a little uh, icon down the right hand side here, uh, which uh, will take you to more information. So if we click that, they'll tell us what this uh, uh, more information about the short sword here. The icon next to it shows whether or not the item is carried or not. Uh, so a little bag icon here shows that we are carrying the backpack. 
um, if we go down here um, to the short sword, it shows that uh, another different little icon which shows that we've actually equipped uh, this uh, sword or this item. Um, if you click through the, these, you can uh, change the status. So we can change it to carried, uh, and if it's blank, it's not carried. And if we're not carrying something, then the it'll remove the uh, weight uh, from the uh, encumbrance here if we aren't carrying it. And we'll just put that back to uh, carried for the moment. Um, you can uh, designate, as we can see here, we've got uh, most of this uh, stuff that we're carrying is in our backpack. Um, all we did here is we click on this line and we start typing in backpack. Uh, it'll automatically uh, fill the uh, word in for you. If we press a uh, tab to come out of that, and now our captain's journal is also uh, in our backpack. So if you've got uh, various uh, containers, then you can um, uh, put that uh, in here to show uh, the location that the item is in. Uh, the pouch here could be um, another, or the component pouch could be another container. And maybe we, we want to put this pouch inside that pouch. So uh, if we uh, type in a CO, MP, um, we saw component pouch. When we tab out of there, our pouch is now inside our component pouch. And we could then put the component pouch if we wanted to in the backpack. So if we do that and type that in, uh, then you can see here the component pouch is in the backpack and the component pouch uh, has a pouch inside it. A bit silly, but it shows you that you can um, have two layers uh, of uh, containers. Uh, down here you've got a uh, treasure. Um, and this will auto fill uh, as well as the dungeon master distributes treasure parcels. Uh, you can type stuff in here as well. Maybe uh, you've got some diamonds. Uh, you can uh, do that. And if you wanted to add another line, uh, we just click on the uh, the uh, add item here, and it'll uh, add another uh, box for you. Uh, here, if we just press return, we'll get a new line here. Uh, notes. Um, this is uh, where all your general information is. If you, um, we've we've got the, I believe the, um, yes, the sage background here. So if we opened up the uh, sage background, we can get to the tables for the personality traits, etc. Uh, we can make a roll uh, on this table here, and then we can uh, drag the text uh, from check. Uh, from chat and drop it in here or if we wanted to uh, pick something like say we opened up the ideal table and we wanted uh, to pick one we can just drag it from the table and drop it in uh, there uh, you can of course just type text in yourself as well the log has got to do with the Adventurers Guild. Uh, I have no idea what any of this uh, means, but if you play characters in the Adventurers Guild, then your Dungeon Master will tell you what this um, log is all about. And finally, we have the Actions page, and this is probably where you will spend uh, most of your time uh, during the game. You'll want your character sheet open uh, at all times uh, at, at this page. Um, down at the bottom, first of all, you've got various modes. We've got combat mode, we've got standard mode, and we've got preparation mode. And this display here, we've got uh, actions and a uh, group and a uh, summary. Uh, you will almost always be in combat and actions mode. And this uh, combat mode shows you uh, all the things that you need for your combat. And the actions shows you all these little uh, icons here ready uh, for a uh, well, combat, really. Uh, if you're a spellcaster like Vary is here, uh, then you may uh, want to go into preparation mode. And this is where you're going to uh, select your spells for the day. So you can see that Vary has six spells, but she can only prepare four each day. But if she wanted to drop the magic missile spell, then she can just untick that and then tick, say, the sleep spell. And then when she goes into combat mode, you can see that the sleep spell is now in place and the magic missile spell has gone away. There are various uh, little uh, tick boxes here. Uh, we've got our spell slots. Uh, we've got two little tick boxes here. And we've also got a tick box for arcane recovery. Um, you tick these off once this has been used. So if we use our arcane recovery ability, then we can tick that box. 
then we'll see that Arcane Recovery has disappeared from the uh, Actions tab to show that we have used it up. It's still there. If we go into Standard Mode, we can see that it's still there, but uh, it has been uh, used. Uh, but in Combat Mode, it disappears so that you know that you've used it and you can't use it again. And similarly, if we uh, use a spell, then we would tick off the spell. If we tick off the second spell slot we've got, then we've used up all our spell slot and all our first level spells will disappear from the uh, character sheet uh, because we have no more left uh, to cast. It leaves the cantrip because of course we can cast them every turn. Um, if we have a short or long rest, depending on what character type or what wizard uh, spellcasting type you have, then these will automatically come back and you can uh, just untick them yourself uh, to uh, make them back. But basically, you'll get those back uh, when you take the appropriate rest. Um, so in combat then, if we uh, open up the combat tracker here, it's a uh, various turn. Um, then we would have our uh, actions tab open. Uh, we would uh, hold down the control key and we would click on our uh, target, uh, in this case, Drowned Sailor 16. And maybe we just want to make a short sword attack. So we're just going to double click on the uh, attack damage uh, or the attack dice. And then if we uh, hit, which we have, we're going to double click on the uh, damage uh, uh, box here. These little symbols here shows that this is a melee weapon and the hand icon shows that it's being used one-handed. Uh, you can click on these so we could change this short sword to a ranged weapon if we wanted to or to a thrown weapon. Um, and we could also change the uh, hand here so that we can uh, show that it is being show, uh, used uh, with two hands. And if this was a versatile weapon, uh, then the it, you would then uh, this would change to the uh, dice that the versatile weapon used when it's used in two hands. In this case, the short sword isn't a versatile weapon, so it d doesn't do change anything. Um, we can also uh, put the sword short sword in our offhand, and by default, we don't get our bonus for uh, our strength in this case uh, onto the dice roll. So we'll just put it back to one hand. Vary, however, is a spellcaster, so she's much more likely to be using spells. Uh, and this is where these little icons come in. So we've got our target for our drowned sailor, and maybe we want to ray of frost. So we're just going to click on the first icon here. If we uh, just click on that, that will uh, give us our attack. We've shown we're hit. And if we uh, click on the little blood icon here, then it will deal the damage. You can click on the magnifying glass here to get more information on what it is these little symbols mean. And of course, we've got the uh, Look, the link icon here, which we can open up to show our array of frost. If we come down to the thunder wave, we could possibly attack multiple targets with this. So Vary's already got Drowned Sailor 16 targeted, but if we hold down the control key and add in another couple, then we now have three targets. And once again, we just need to uh, click on the cast button here. The dice will roll. It will show us uh, the successes or failures of the uh, particular uh, targets. And then we can just roll damage and Fantasy Grounds will apply the correct damage to the Drowned Sailors here, depending on whether they succeeded or failed on their saving throw. Uh, if Vary was casting the Thunder Wave spell here at a higher level, then if we click on the magnifying glass to open up the detail, you can see the damage here is 2d8. But if we're casting this at maybe second level, then we might get 3d8. So instead of uh, double clicking, uh, let's uh, add in a few more targets. Instead of double clicking uh, on the little blood icon here, uh, what we would want to do is to uh, click on the 2d8 uh, and hold and then we're going to right click to uh, add in another uh, dice and then we're just going to drop that in chat and all the affected targets uh, will get the appropriate damage depending on whether they passed or failed their saving throw. Um, okay uh, that's uh, about as long as I want to make this video so that's a whirlwind tour of the uh, character sheet. I uh, hope that was useful and thank you for watching. Cheers for now.